All right, thanks guys for joining us today. I'm Miss Corey, and we've got another Sager Kids lesson for you. Let's get started with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to get together and study your word. We love you and know that you love us too. I ask that you help us stay still and listen and hear the words that you want us to hear today. Help us teachers teach it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, let's go over our Bible truth cards. The first one is what word means God will always keep his promises. Landon, Avery, do you know what word? He'll always keep his promises. Faithful. Good job, guys. I bet you got that one right. Okay, what did Jesus come to save us from? Do you know, Reed, Judd, Grayson? What did he come to save us from? The punishment of sin. And we all sin, don't we, guys? We all need salvation from the punishment of our sins. How about this? Can we trust God only sometimes or all the time? Dylan, what do you think? Amelia, Emily, what do you think? Sometimes? All the time. That's right. Good job, guys. One more. Let's see if you can remember this one. What word means God knows and sees everything? Cole, Camry, do you know? Omniscient. He does. He knows and sees everything. Good job, guys. Now I'm going to go over the memory verse with you one time and show you the motions, and then we'll do our song. Are you ready? Okay, say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. And where in the Bible do we find that? Do you know? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Okay, guys, get up and let's do the video together. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean. On your own understanding Trust in the Lord with all your heart And do not lean on your own understanding
guys, let's do a review of last week. Remember, it was time for Jacob to move back to the land of Canaan. But remember, he was worried because he was afraid Esau was still going to be angry with him. What happened when Jacob was alone at night? Do you remember? He wrestled with God, didn't he? And God changed his name. Do you remember what God changed his name to? He changed his name to Israel, didn't he? Jacob understood that he was a deceiver and a liar and a sinner, but God had changed Jacob. The next day, Jacob showed his brother Esau how sorry he was. Remember, he bowed down before him. The brothers were reconciled. We talked about that. Do you remember what it means to be reconciled? It kind of means to like make up, forgive each other, come back together after an argument. There was peace again between the two brothers. And one last question. I know you guys know this. How many sons did Jacob have? Do you remember? Twelve sons, didn't he? Let's sing our song together. sons of Jacob. These are the sons of Jacob. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sons of Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, Ezekiel, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. These are the sons of Jacob. All right, guys, who have we been talking about? Jacob, right? And he was one of how many sons? Roman and Grayson? Twelve, that's right. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what happened when he was 17 years old, what happened with him and some of his brothers. So they were living in Canaan and working with his brothers. Um, They were caring for the sheep and goats, as a lot of people did back in those days. And one day, Jacob, um, the father, gave his son Joseph a special gift. Can anybody tell me what that special gift might have been if you've been to Branson and maybe seen the show or, or heard of it? The coat of many colors. That's right. Jacob gave Joseph a coat of many colors. So that gift was kind of rare because Joseph was number 11. The only son younger was Benjamin. So that was a very rare and special gift. And Joseph's brothers kind of got jealous, didn't they, right? Because um, Jacob looked on Joseph with such favor. So they didn't really like how their father gave him special treatment. And they were so jealous of him that they even hated him. All right. So do you think God was pleased with their jealousy? Dylan, Amelia? No, God doesn't want us to be jealous. So God wants us to love our brothers and sisters. But let's see what let's see what happens. Let's read Genesis 37, 5 through 9. All right. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us, or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dream. All right, so you guys are thinking, what's a sheaf? Okay, a sheaf is like a bundle of grain that's been tied together. Okay, so that's kind of what his dream was about. So who had this dream? Joseph did, right? And you and I have dreams all the time. Sometimes we can't remember what they're about, but Joseph's dream was very vivid, and he wanted to tell somebody about it. And so who do you think he went to go tell? His brothers. That's right. Do you think that was a good idea? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, 
So what did the, what did the bundle of sheaves do? So some of them bowed down, right? Can you guys act like you're bowing down at home? And then what did Joseph's bundle do? It stood upright. It stood tall. Now, can you guys stand up really tall? So what do you think this meant? Do you think that it meant that maybe one day Joseph might rule over them? That's what they thought, huh? Okay, we're going to read 30, Genesis 37, 9 now. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. So, what did he dream about this time? The sun, the moon, and the stars. Do you remember how many stars there were? How, much, how many stars did the Bible say there were? Eleven. So, can you guys think of what that might represent? Judd, Kinley, his brothers, that's right. The 11 stars stood for the 11 brothers. So this time when, he, when Joseph told his brothers, they, it, made him, it made them even matter. And when he told his parents about it, his parents thought that it might meant that he would reign over them someday. And they weren't happy about it. His brothers were jealous of him. And now he dreamed that he would rule over them someday. And they probably thought that was ridiculous. And so that probably made them dislike him even more. All right, so like Miss Hillary said, Joseph's brothers hated him. He had had these dreams and told them about it, and they hated him. So they had this plan to get rid of their brother. So Joseph went to look for his brothers who were looking after the sheep and the goats. And they saw him coming. They looked. He was far off. They saw Joseph coming, and they made this plan. They said, let's kill him and throw him in a pit. But let me read it to you out of the word. Listen to this. They said, come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him and he will, we will see what will become of his dreams. So isn't that terrible? The brothers were going to throw him into a pit. They were going to kill him, throw him into a pit and leaving there. Well, Reuben, who was the oldest brother, didn't want to do that. He said, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him into a pit. And Reuben had this plan that they would throw him in a pit and then he'd come back later and get him out and take him back to their dad. But the brothers agreed not to kill him, just to throw him in the pit. So they did. They threw him in a pit. And then they saw this caravan going on their way to Egypt to sell their goods there. And they thought Judah, another one of the brothers, thought, well, we might as well make some money. Why don't we sell him to these travelers, these traders that are going to Egypt? And that's what he did. They sold their brother. The other brothers agreed, except for Reuben. And he found out later when he went to the pit and he wasn't there. But they agreed to sell their brother. Well, Joseph's brothers didn't want to get in trouble with their dad, so they took Joseph's coat. Remember the coat Miss Hillary told you about, the coat of many colors? Well, they took it, and they killed a, a young goat, and they dipped the coat in blood and took it to their father, Joseph, and said, Can you tell us if this is your son's coat? And when Jacob saw that, he, can you imagine what a parent, when they lose a child, he was so upset and he cried for days and he just mourned Joseph's death. And he thought a wild animal has torn him apart and killed him. So Jacob was just cried for days. All right, guys. So remember, they sold Joseph and he was now a slave. Where did he end up going? Do you know? He was taken to Egypt. Let's talk about the dreams that Miss Hillary talked about. Do you remember those dreams? What were they? That he would rule over his family and that they would bow down to him, right? It doesn't look like that's going to happen, does it? So Joseph is gone at this point. They've gotten rid of him. He's been sold off as a slave in Egypt. Let's find out what happened to Joseph once he got to Egypt. Let's read in Genesis, okay? 
It says, Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Wow. Who did they sell Joseph to? Do you remember? To Potiphar. Joseph became a slave to a very powerful man. Potiphar, he was the captain of the guard, and he worked for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Things were looking really bad for Joseph at this point, weren't they? He was a slave, and things were not looking good for his outcome at all. But you know what? God was in control. Um, We can always trust that God's plan is just right, even when things don't look like they're going to be okay. It was wrong for Joseph's brothers to hate him and harm him, wasn't it? They had a lot of evil plans for Joseph. But can you tell me who was really in control here? Who do you think was in control? Were the brothers in control or was God in control? That's right. God was in control. Nobody's plans can ever stop God's plans because God is sovereign, right? We've learned that. What does sovereign mean? Do you remember? God is in control of everything, isn't he? That's right. Even though Joseph's brothers were really mean and sinful, God was doing exactly what needed to be done through this. He knew that Joseph needed to be in Egypt, and that's exactly where he ended up. God brought Joseph to Egypt for a very special reason, and we're going to find out what that reason is in the next couple weeks, okay? today. Good! Can I help with the memory verse questions? Sure. Let's see how well you listened. How did Joseph's brothers feel about him? Well, brothers are supposed to love each other, and I love all 830 of my brothers, so he probably loved them. No, the Bible tells us that they hated him. They were jealous of him. But why were Joseph's brothers jealous of him? Can you guys at home tell me why were they jealous? Because Joseph was the favorite, right? Oh, no, that's not good. I'm glad my father doesn't have a favorite. Well, that's what you think. Do you know what special gift Jacob gave to his son, Joseph? A shiny new mouse scooter! (laughs) No, you guys at home, what gift did he give him? Macy, Brody, Alyssa? A coat of many colors. That's right. Good. Oh, I think I'd rather just have a mouse scooter. (laughs) I don't think they had scooters back then. Did you hear the part of the lesson that talked about Joseph's dreams? Yes. His first dream was about the grain sheaves. Yes. His brother's grain sheaves bowed down to his. Do you remember what happened in the second dream? 
the sun, the moon, and all eleven stars bowed down to Joseph. So what did that mean? That his family would bow down to him, and he would rule over them, and that made his brothers hate him even more. That's right. What did what did Joseph's brothers do to him when he came to find them? They hid in a hole and threw rat cheese at him. <laughs> no, they didn't. They threw him into a pit. Then they sold him to the traders who took him to Egypt. Ooh, I bet Joseph's dad was sad when Joseph didn't come home. He was. The brothers showed Jacob Joseph's colored coat with blood on it, and he thought Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. Or a cat. Cats are dangerous. <laughs> Why didn't God stop them? Isn't God in control of everything? Yes, God is sovereign. Joseph's brothers sinned, though. But Joseph could still trust God to take care of him, even though these bad things happened. So, what did Joseph do in Egypt? Joseph was a slave. Was that going to be part of God's plan? Yes, Stuart. God was going to use Joseph to help a lot of people. We will talk about that in the next couple of weeks. But we can trust God to take care of us all the time, even when bad things happen, because God loves us. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a good week.